good, Green Screen Entertainment fans? Your boy Jay Green is back. This weekend, I'm bringing you my review for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. The summer season of movies is officially upon us. Game! It finally came! Now, for those of you out there who are not in the know and have no idea what Guardians of the Galaxy is, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is the follow up to the 2014 film Guardians of the Galaxy also written and directed by James Gunn. Now this movie is based off of an old school Marvel property from back in the day, I'm talking the 70s, about a team of misfits that kind of goes around the galaxy protecting shit. This movie stars Chris Pratt, Kurt Russell, Bradley Cooper, Vin Diesel, Dave Bautista, Zoe Zeldana, and Michael Rooker. Now if we're being honest with each other, when we sat down and saw that very first teaser trailer for the Guardians of the Galaxy, in our minds we was thinking, who? But because Marvel had been hitting it out the park up until then, we decided we're going to give them a chance. So when we sat down, we were pleasantly surprised, thoroughly enjoyed the film. Now like most people, I didn't love the movie. I really liked it and definitely liked watching it on palm repeat viewings. But I think that director and writer James Gunn did even better with this one. He gave us some good character development in that first movie. He showed us some of the characters' weaknesses, some of their strengths, and he built upon that in this film. He showed us a lot more of their ambitions, what they want, where they want to go. We're also kind of tagging along with them on a mission or two, trying to see how they get down with the get down as far as being Guardians of the Galaxy. Now without spoiling anything, one of the reasons why I love Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 so much was because of the difference in the character dynamic that we got in this film as opposed to the first film. Case in point, Nebula, Gamora. In the first film, they're beefing throughout and they're siblings. They want to cut each other's heads off the entire film. This movie, it's the same damn thing. However, the way that James Gunn writes and directs these scenes, he brings you a little bit more emotionally into the reasons why Nebula hates her sister so much. Doesn't mean you're going to start rooting for Nebula right off the bat, we're still on Gamora's side, but it definitely holds more weight in the scene, more tension in the scene, and it's more entertaining throughout because you understand the backstory as to why Nebula has so much hatred for Gamora. Star-Lord and his dad. We don't know in the first movie why he left him with Yondu, why he never came back to get him, or who his dad actually is. In this movie, we find out that Kurt Russell, playing Ego the Living Planet, You are the father! And as you would imagine, that information is going to bring about questions, not just from us as the audience, but also from Star-Lord himself to his father. Why did you never come back to be with my moms? Why did you never come get me? Why did you leave me with Yondu? All of those questions that we're asking and he's asking get answered throughout this entire film. The answers are fulfilling, they're entertaining, and they also lead to a pretty interesting ending. That's all I'm going to say. And of course, we're going to get some great scenes from Drax, Rocket Raccoon, Baby Groot is cute, Yondu. But in the end of the day, the scene stealers, the people that stole the entire show, was Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon and Michael Rooker as Yondu. When those two are on screen together, it's electric, it's entertaining, it's witty. They play off of each other extremely well. And when they're one-on-one, -on -one, getting it, watching them get into their little shenanigans or get out of their little shenanigans is just as entertaining. Yondu brings back that little arrow that when he be whistling, it be zipping around killing fools. And in this movie, we get a legitimate scene where he's murking hell of people way more than he did in the first movie. Enough nonsense, Ravager! Rocket Raccoon's blasting people left and right. We also get some more emotional tidbits from both of those characters. Definitely Michael Rooker and Bradley Cooper came to play ball in this film, they killed it. One more thing that I want to say about director and writer James Gunn, again, he wrote the first one, directed the first uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, he wrote and directed this one. There's also a bunch of other movies that he's come out with in the past. I'm starting to become a bigger fan of his. One thing that I liked that he did with this movie was that there were certain scenes where they could have played off as super cheesy. So what he does in the scene is he kind of has a certain type of music, he's got the certain type of dialogue and mannerisms for the characters to play up into that highly emotional position where because it's a comic book film you're like, I don't know 
know if I'm really comfortable with it going there. I'd rather just have a good time and rather have fun instead of be overly drama or overly emotional. And then right when it's about to get to that point, he cuts it, flips it, and gives you something that's a little bit of a funny joke or takes your attention away from that emotion, but not so much so that he just downplays what they were talking about. Whatever they were talking about, it still holds weight and it still holds value. You're still emotionally invested, but at the same time, not at the sappy level. It's not easy to do that. I haven't seen it in many films and I watch movies all the damn time. So I just wanted to give director and writer James Gunn a shout out for being able to do that and keep it still lighthearted, fun, deep, drama, murderous, all of that in a Marvel film. Great. Look guys, in the end of the day, I can't really say too many more good things about Guardians of the Galaxy 2 without giving something away, so I'm going to cut it right there. I'm going to say that you should rush out to that theater and go check this movie out this weekend. Big shouts out to James Gunn for being able to make a movie that to me is a little bit of a step up from the first one. While I did like it a lot, I'm not like everyone else where I was so in love and enthralled with it like, oh my god, it's the greatest movie ever. Really good, but I think personally this one's a little bit better and it's primarily because of the character development and the dynamic that they have between each other throughout the film. So definitely check it out. Marvel does it again as if you really had to question that. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I hope I gave you a little bit of insight into what this movie was about and what you got going on when you're going to see this sequel and if it's good enough to go check out in the theater. Other than that, like, subscribe, your boy, he's out.